All right, peasants, here we are. I'm gonna do another real video series. I'm gonna go over first Adaptronic. Um, we'll go pull over a couple files here. It's gonna be one from TurboSource. Really, this is not how you wanna set up a VE table, although it's not inherently bad. It just really should have a little bit more resolution. These targets aren't terrible. Nothing terrible about this. This is way too rich right here, but I'm sure this is just base map. Um, the main issue you're going to find with Adaptronic is the transient corrections, acceleration enrichment, um, where you have a balance of TPS rate. This is percent per second of a throttle position sensor that's changing. So if you slap a pedal quickly, that's going to be a higher percentage change per second. And then you have the actual throttle position. So if you are at cruising, let's say you're 15% throttle to cruise the car on the highway, and you hit it kind of slow, it might not hit this 48% per second. Right? But if you go and you smack the throttle quickly, you could easily be in the 300, 400, 500 percent per second range for sensitivity that'll be your tps rate to enrich right there uh next thing would be like fuel pooling this is um i mean obviously there's not directions for this stuff but this is the fuel that will be sitting on the intake manifold runner you need more when the engine's cold and this should actually be scaled according to vacuum so Normally you're going to need more here and less here because the engine is going to be moving much quicker when you're already in boost. In other words, you're going to be higher up in RPM, so you should need less up here. Uh, EVAP time, very much the same effect. Uh, this is going to need more here, less here, and then more here, less here. Predicted map, uh, this is very much a, a tricking the map sensor. So if you had these values as positive, this car is gonna be stupid rich. Um, should really just not try to do that. Um, fuel starting stuff on the Datronic is usually really good. Um, like leave these factory, which this is not, this is, not going to be good. You're going to want to have a bunch of extra fuel here just to help keep the engine alive when it's cold. So this is a very bad example. Um, cranking map pretty much needs more fuel when it's cold, needs less when it's hot. <clears throat> Injector staging, normally this should be blending pretty good. And so, yeah, so this isn't even filled out by, by Turbulon, but... <clears throat> You know, that's a preference thing. You can let the ECU do it all by itself, or you can tell it what to do. And um, I prefer to tell what to do, because I usually know better. So, let's say, for instance, you have a set of the same size injectors. So, ID 1000s, primary and secondary. So, your secondary stage is going to be 50% value. And you don't want to smack it with 50% all at once. You want to taper that in. So you can find, let's say, 3,800 RPM is going to be the absolute minimum. And 4 PSI is absolute minimum. So you can go here and you say, I want 2%. And then at the top of this, you know what? Let's say like 6%. And then 7 PSI, I want 6%. And then I want 10%. You can kind of do a little extrapolation here with X, get that going, and then you can say by 13%, or I'm sorry, 13 PSI, you want 25, and you want 35. And then we'll go here, first click X, here we'll click Y, and that's a very quick interpolation, and then by the time you get it and say 20, 20 PSI, or Let's just do this right here. We'll say we want 40 and 50. So now we have fully staged in, now they're balanced. 
we'll do one more of those and click Y for that. And then from here, we'll just go 50. <clears throat> Very quickly, that's going to work pretty well. Um, just kind of, I think it's called homogenize. It's, in other words, you're trying to douse the secondary injectors or the secondary runners with fuel. Um, doing this properly at the right time is going to pick up mid-range torque every single time. Injection timing on these factory settings of 180 and 340 is pretty trash. Normally you set it per pressure and per RPM. So when you're cruising around, you're going to want a very high number. And then when you're rolling into the throttle here and into boost, this should be tapering away. And with RPM, it's kind of a increasing value. So if this was, let's say 300, you might want this to be 340 by the end of it, right? And you'll find certain points to where you make the fuel as rich as possible based on injection timing. And that's super important. So you wanna get the fuel in at the proper timing, just like you said, ignition timing, right? So you're finding maximum brake torque for ignition, which holy shit, this is not right. But um, I'm just gonna get one of my files. This is, this is a fucking disaster. This is a much better VE table first off. <clears throat> but I think, oh yeah, I left this one, but you'll see like this one's increasing, right? This makes a lot more sense. Um, there's a lot of in between here with how to correct predicted maps. And this is pretty much a better approach. You really don't want this to go in the positives. Otherwise you have your, your fueling correction set up wrong on the base setups, X fuel pooling, evap percentage and async. Um, and you're going to find these are based on like per throttle body. So if you've got like a rotary works 90 millimeter versus a factory FD versus a factory FC versus whatever else, they're all going to be different. Um, I was trying to give you guys a better idea of <clears throat> what is necessary to configure a motor, which is why I do this every single day. Um, so back on the injection timing, so fuel injection timing. This is very much like finding maximum brake torque for your ignition timing. And it's such a critical thing that so many people do not understand and so many people do not touch. And I'm telling you right away, this is going to be, especially on an NA motor, this is like 8%, 12% power difference. This is huge. This is probably bigger than optimizing timing on rotaries. It's that important. Because rotaries are so fuel um, reliant that when you have the timing of when the fuel injection is, this is end of, this is end of injection for when they're setting it, the time in which the end of injection happens for the injectors firing is incredibly critical. I cannot say that enough. Anyways, this is a little quick overview of Adaptronic. Um, if you're using dual intakes or like the RX-8, R, I'm sorry, yeah, RX-8 stuff, these are really cool to have little setups. The main downside of this ECU is when it comes to the functionality, um, it's very limited. So I would not have this ECU try to do anything motorsports related. What it does do phenomenally, and it should be praised for, is all the engine protections are excellent and the fuel staging is excellent. Beyond those two things, I'm not a huge fan simply because the transient fueling is hit or miss on every single car. I've, I've never once had a file to say like, okay, drop this on a car, drop this on another car. It's different on every single car. Um, and then the same thing goes with uh, any kind of motorsports type control. So if I had, like here's our pathetic little outputs, right? We have really nothing to play with. And it's not like I can go and set configures configuration for anything.
by contrast, I'll pull up my personal Intron file. I can go here. I want to knock control. Okay, well, here's my knock control. If it's greater than this, it turns on. Here's the status, greater than zero. So I can set all these conditions. I can set delays for on and off. I can go into the actual, where was it? Configuration. Yeah, well, before we get too deep in that, <laughs> we'll do stuff like launch control, uh, only anti-lag. I can set up a million different things. Like this is a, a dual intake. So some of you have seen the videos I did on using the FD upper intake manifold with a vacuum solenoid to enable the primary secondary using a single LS3 throttle body. The idea being that I close off the secondary ports and the semi-peripheral port on my motor to have a lot more bottom end grunt and better idle only running the primaries. So I can set a condition here with engine RPM, manifold pressure, engine speed. In other words, these are triggering, right? I'm, I'm creating a table. And then I go here to my table for uh, dual intake. And you can see it's on or off of that solenoid based on the efficiency calculation of the engine, which is kind of like my volumetric efficiency, but a calculated value. This is uh, much, much more complex, and I won't go into that. But, you know, there's stuff like flame control, which is essentially a, a rolling anti-lag type flame. Um, there's just endless amounts of controls that I can do on a real motorsports ECU. That is not the case on the Adaptronic, which is what I'm going to be getting back to. So this is super limited. Is it okay? Yes, it runs fine, but don't trust it for everything. This is something that you want to keep really simple. You want to keep just makes it run the car fine. But if you're trying to think outside the box and you're trying to do a bunch of different controls, this is not the right ECU for you. You'd be better off with a Haltech, you'd be better off with an AEM, be better off with the ECU Master, better off with Link, Mtron, Motec, whatever it is, depending on your skill level and what you're comfortable doing. So like ECU Master, there's another one, right? This is super economical when it comes to uh, pricing and such. So like I can, I set up this timing table ages ago, but this is wrong. You would never want 49 degrees on a rotary. Um, but you can go and set your timing here. You can say, I want to go to my enrichment page. Oh, I didn't make one yet, but you can go to make an enrichment page and say, Hey, acceleration enrichment, build me a table. This is your change. And throttle position. So this is like a dead band to where it does not enable. The sustain rate is kind of like a decay. Uh, how much it will actually enrich is a total over your base. Uh, you can do grouping if you have a very weird intake manifold configuration. Um, and you could disable map, map sensor, which actually makes it pretty accurate. I like that. But then you can go through and there's a million different things for versus D TPS rate, versus TPS factor, versus RPM factor, versus coolant temp, versus ignition. So in other words, if you're ignition, you want to delay the ignition advance. Let's say you're trying to get off the line soft. So the second you smack this thing hard, you want to take out a little bit of timing to kind of help it out kind of make the motor safer. But there's a million different ways to set up um, this and it's little tiny motorsport functions like um, flat shift, paddle shift, rev matching, rolling start, uh, anti-lag, shift lights, a little bit more motorsports oriented and this is still very economical ECU. And then again, like I said, you're pretty limited here uh, we're going to go through AEM. 
So, AM real quick. We've got, you know, here's your VE table. This is actually going to run the motor pretty well. You can see there's a lot more fuel here because it's blending in fuel here to handle part of the acceleration enrichment. And then you need less fuel because this is a throttle base. This is an alpha end map. So throttle percent versus engine speed. Uh, you have real injector data, primary, secondary, tertiary injectors. Um, you have opening time, you have offsets based on fuel pressure. I mean, these are real ECUs. This is what's going to be found on like a racetrack. You're not going to find any real car that's doing something that's, I mean, I keep saying this, but find me a real race car that's running on Adaptronic, that's running on PowerFC, that's running on Microtech. I mean, no, you'll see a few boutique, like, drag racing shit. You won't see real cars out there racing on stuff like that. You know, like, here's a... I made all these tables to make it a lot more sense, but... Base ignition, split timing... I'm, I'm showing stuff that I should never be showing, but... Real protections based on uh, Lambda feedback with EMAP and having boost control and everything based on engine coolant temperature or or other important factors. In other words, all of this is designed to make your life easier. So you have, you know, stage injection. They should be blending properly. This is the primary split. So you'd have primaries only, 20% secondaries, 40% second, I'm sorry, well, 20% primaries, 40% primaries, 50% primaries. And that's how that would go. So that was pretty long. How long did I go here? 17 minutes. Holy shit. But that gives you an idea of Adaptronic, AEM, Mtron, which I went over super briefly. This is like, this is the tits. This is the one. Um, the amount of vehicle functions that I can go through on this and stack them is insane. Like input setups like integrated lambda sensors i've got boost pressure manifold pressure this gives me a throttle mass flow barometric pressure because i don't know about you but i drive in the mountains so i need this thing to be running off of um the altitude sensor essentially that's what this is it's telling me hey we're at this elevation based on atmospheric pressure and it compensates accordingly so I don't want to make 30 pounds of boost everywhere. I want to make the same power everywhere. So if I'm going at sea level making 30 PSI and my turbo compressor map is at a certain range and whatever else, but then I go up to 4,000 feet, I don't want it to still make 30 PSI. I want it to make 36, 37 to compensate for the altitude. That's something this ECU can handle. This has G4 sensors, it has ethanol sensors, anything you can imagine when it comes to controls, switches, real motorsport shit. And so every time I see a comparison of like, oh yeah, my EC can do this. Actually, no, you're wrong. You can try, you can fart around with it as much as you want, but there's real shit out there. Educate yourself and try doing this the right way because some of these things are badass and you're doing yourself a disservice if you're selling yourself short getting some garbage ECU that does not match your goals. So my job personally is to educate you and make sure that you're matching your budget and your build for your needs, period. So if anyone needs help with that, feel free to drop me an email. It's rightbraindesign at gmail.com or... Anything else, really. Just hit me up over Facebook, Instagram, and I'll take care of you guys for any questions you may have or uh, any services you need for tuning or any sort of exotic, crazy shit you want to think up. So, peace, y'all. Hope you enjoyed that.